Welcome to the Raven Space on YouTube. My name is Jason, and this is Raven Space Daily, where we talk about Baltimore Ravens news every single weekday. Thank you guys so much for joining me for the first ever live stream of Raven Space Daily. Please, guys, talk to me in the comments while we do the show. It's going to be awesome. I'm super happy to talk to you guys. Uh, if you're not a Patreon subscriber, please check it out. If you're not a YouTube subscriber, please subscribe to the YouTube channel for the best Baltimore Ravens content on the internet. Um, also, again, a special shout out to our Patreon subscribers because without you guys, none of this is possible. Now we're going to head into our first topic, which is the winners and the losers of last night's game against the Miami Dolphins. Um, we had some players play very, very well, and we had some players that played not so well. And so now we're going to hop into some of the winners. Uh, one of the winners that stands out uh, was Woodrum, the backup quarterback who came in and really played very, very well. Woodrum had some people who were criticizing him uh, coming into camp, but he's performed. I'm super, super happy to see to see him play so well. Um, now, he plays so well that he's going to give uh, Ryan Mallett a run for his money. And I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see how that goes. So, that's without my first player that played well. He had two rushing touchdowns. He played extremely well. The second player that played extremely well is Buck Allen. Uh, Buck Allen played a game that I was not sure he could play. Uh, he made people miss. He was finding holes. He was explosive. And he did a lot of great things. And so I was super excited to see him play well. And I'm happy that he's going to make this running back competition more complex. So if you were a fan of Buck Allen, uh, when he was one of the main running backs for the Baltimore Ravens, he might have reinvigorated, you know, your uh, fandom. So I'm super excited to see that. And again, the last person I have on my winners list is Max Williams. Again, I've been very, very hard on Max. Uh, I've said a lot of bad things about Max um, in the past. I said he was overrated. Um, last night, he showed me that he still has the potential and that I should not write him off. Um, Max Williams had two big plays, uh, one where him by himself ran to get a first down. He carried defenders with him, and then another one where he ran to set the Ravens up uh, in order to get a touchdown. So, again, Max Williams played super great as a tight end. He put himself in the conversation uh, to be a starter and showed that he still does have the most potential out of that tight end group. So, again, just a review for you guys that the winners were Josh Woodrum, Buck Allen, and Max Williams. And so, now we're going to go on to the losers. And I could not get three losers because I thought a lot of people played very well. But for the losers, I have Ryan Mallett and Quincy Adebojo. So, again, they, they did not play well uh, to me. Let's start with Ryan Mallett. Two interceptions. Um, and, again... It's very possible to say that these interceptions were not his fault, but as the quarterback, everything is your fault. Um, again, he looked like he was not doing his progressions very well. And I was very surprised um, that even the second week, he still looked so rusty. Um, now, he did make some good plays in the red zone, and I was excited to see that stuff happen, but as a whole, I did not think he played well at all. So, I, I'm... I'm afraid to see, you know, what he'll do, um, you know, if he was actually the starter in, in the game. The second player that I thought was a loser was Quincy Adebojo. Qu Quincy just did not play up to the standards that I thought he was going to play at. Um, on both of Ryan Mallett's interceptions, he was the receiver. On the first play, he looked back too early, which really hurts uh, the, the Ravens and Ryan Mallett in that throw. And then the second play, he he didn't catch the ball. Now, the pass was thrown in back of him, but he did not catch the ball, and you got to catch the ball. That's the simple. It's easy. You are a receiver. you got to catch the ball, and he cannot do that. So I was super disappointed in him for that as well. Um, with Tim White out, it's time for him to step up. And last game, he did not step up. And I, I, just, I think he's going to struggle right now uh, to make the team because of these uh, inconsistencies in his play so again super disappointed about that but those are my winners and losers you guys let me know in the comments uh, who do you think are the winners of that last game who you think are the losers of that last game and we're gonna move on to our second topic which is 
takeaways. You know, what do we take away from this game? And so there are a lot of different takeaways uh, when there's a lot of different takeaways that we have. I just I just think that the biggest takeaway is the defense. Again, I think the defense w played so well. Um, there were some stretches where they kind of looked like they couldn't tackle. Uh, that's the thing they'll fix. But as a whole, you see how deep the defensive line is again dominant against the run you see that we're very deep at cornerback with a rookie like hill continuously making plays again and again and again i was super impressed by it um i'm super excited for the future of the defense and that's the first takeaway the second takeaway is that i still do think that ryan mallet can do this um, and even though Woodrum played well, he did play against backups. So without Joe Flacco, I think we're really going to struggle uh, in this season. Now, again, it's just the preseason, so do not jump too far ahead. Uh, but I, I'm a little bit nervous um, what happens without Joe Flacco. And then my third takeaway is that this running game is going to be uh, this running game is going to be super competitive. Now, I thought that. There was not going to be any competition for the run game. I thought Danny Woodhead was going to be kind of like set in stone. Uh, I thought all our running backs order was done. But Buck Allen, uh, Taquan Mizzou, uh, even Bobby Rainey are coming in and they're saying, hey, don't forget about me. I still can play this game. Um, some people in the past have asked me about Buck Allen. Um, and I, you know, I, I was said, no, nah, not Buck. He's not good enough. I was wrong. Buck Allen is good enough if he plays like he did last game because he played well from the first quarter all the way to the last quarter. And so I really do think that he has a chance to play very, very well if, you know, the Ravens do give him a chance to play. So, you know, again, we will see. Those are my takeaways uh, from week two. If you guys want a more in-depth analysis uh, than I can give here on Raven Space Daily, please go look at Steven's... Uh, analysis they took the night of uh you can go look at it on our youtube channel and it's a longer video where he goes into every single facet so please check that out before we go into our third topic which is the signing of jeremy zuta so jeremy zuta signed to the baltimore ravens for a two-year deal worth four million dollars and the max he can get is six million and so, again, uh, it's a deal that we need. It's not a deal that we wanted, but it's the deal that we needed. And when I say that, I, I just mean that Zuta is not the best. And we know that. Uh, that was the reason we cut him. He's not the greatest. But I do think he'll get the job done. I think that allows the Ravens to kick Ryan Jensen out to left guard. And what that does is it helps the Ravens become a better offensive line. And so I think going into the season, we're going to have Ronnie Stanley at left tackle, Ryan Jensen at left guard, Jeremy, Jeremy Zuta at center, uh, Marshall Yonda at right guard, and then Austin Howard at right tackle. Now, is this the best line we can get? No. Is Jeremy Zuta the best center um, in the NFL? No, of course not. But for what we can get right now, he's a, a great deal. Um, he's being paid very, very cheaply um, for two years. And hopefully he can fit and be a great piece for the Baltimore Ravens for, you know, these next two years. So, again, let me know in the comments below. Are you excited about uh, Jeremy Zuta? Do you think he has a real chance to be a good player in this league? Again, let me know. I'm a little wary. I thought he played okay last year, but he can always play better. So, please, you guys, let me know. Uh, in the comments below and so we're going to get to a giveaway winner but i want to say uh, if you guys are in the chat the live stream chat stay there because we'll do live questions after i announce the giveaway winner i um, mean we'll be doing this for every live video so again we're going to do that uh today as well so let's go to the giveaway winner again the way you win this giveaway is by going to facebook.com and sharing one of our pictures uh, i'm going to tell you how to win this next giveaway and it's going to be something easy and simple so you guys can win a giveaway. 
Um, and the giveaway winner for this week is Clayton Hacker. So Clayton went to our Facebook page. He was sharing um, the pictures. And so congratulations, Clayton. Please message us on YouTube for your chance to get this giveaway. Um, and we're super excited. Thank you so much for being a, a Raven Space fan. Um, now, uh, to win the next week's giveaway, what I need you guys to do um, is to go to ravenspace.com, uh, the website where we have articles, and you please can go and chat into our forums. I'm going to pick a random person who's in the forums, uh, who's talking to people, and we're going to make you guys the giveaway winner and send you guys something very nice. So again, please, please, please do that. Uh, become a giveaway winner and help make the Raven Space stronger. And so now we're going to get into the questions. Uh, so you guys, please, uh, in the chat, let me know what your questions are and I will answer them. And I saw one question that asked, uh, do you remember when I said Buck was going to be great? So, uh, Buck, I'm not going to say he's going to be great yet, but Buck has a chance to be very, very, very good. Um, and he can be a good person to help people out. Um, I think Buck has a chance to be a very, very good running back. He won't be great, but he may he may work himself into the starter. You never know. So um, this question comes from Joe Flacco is elite. Um, and he asks Ravens record prediction. So I've said this before. Um, a lot of you guys know, I think the Ravens are going to go 10 and six, make the playoffs as a wild card team. And then when they're in the playoffs, they're going to have a chance to do something great. So who knows what they'll do. Um, but again, when you're in the playoffs, anything is possible. And then this is the last question I'm going to take. Uh, from Joe Schmo, and he asks, what did you think of Tim Williams last night? So, last night, Tim Williams was on and off. One time I saw him get completely pancaked, but then when he got the sack, it was a very nice inside move. Um, I, I thought that the inside move was nice. I thought that that's the best thing he does, so for him to get it off is a very, very good thing. I'm super excited uh, that he can come along, but he doesn't have to because I thought Judon played well. I thought Sizzle played well, and I think that we have so much depth there that we'll be okay. As a matter of fact, I do see some questions. Um, I think I'm going to uh, take a couple more. Uh, this one asks, who do you predict will be the starting tight end uh, by week one? I still think it's going to be Nick Boyle, but I think Max Williams is on his heels. I think you cannot write off Max Williams. Uh, Nick Boyle will be the starter by week one, but Max Williams will be ready and nipping. So, and then this is the last question. Um, and this question is, how do you feel about signing a QB first or second round next year? So how do you feel about drafting a QB? Um, I, I don't feel any type of way about it. I think Joe Flacco still has some years left. Uh, we have to see how this back injury works out because back injuries can be dangerous. But I think that Joe Flacco is a good player. I'm still excited to see how he matures and gets to this point. Because you gotta, you gotta remember, he's still young compared to Tom Brady. So he has a chance to be better um, and grow. And he still has a strong arm. So we'll see where that takes us. So uh, again, thank you guys so much. Uh, this is the first episode of Raven Space Live. We'll be doing these uh, from now on every single day. We'll try, um, and except for Mondays, but Tuesdays through Fridays, we'll do these. Um, again, please subscribe to Raven Space on YouTube. Uh, we'll do, oh, sorry, we'll do these at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you can go get these and check these out. I'll still put them on the, uh, of course, regular uploads. So if you can't make the live stream, you can still watch them. No issues there. So again, please subscribe to Raven Space on YouTube. Uh, check out our Patreon page where you guys can help support independent media. Um, we don't have enough independent media uh, in this country, and you guys can help us out uh, and support us. Also, check out our different social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, for other great Baltimore Ravens content. Again, thank you guys so much for your support. Subscribe, and go Ravens. <laughs>